looking across the fence, the 2016 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. We'll learn how a Lamoille County farm was named the number one dairy in the state thanks to perseverance, thrift, and good old-fashioned hard work. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. 2016 is a challenging year for Vermont's dairy farmers. The price paid to farmers for their milk is reaching record lows. Farmers are still weighing the impact of new environmental regulations and there's always Mother Nature to reckon with. And yet the cows have to be milked and the crops have to be harvested. So to be named the top dairy farm in Vermont means it's possible to do more than survive. In 2016, a dairy farm can still thrive. The Lamphere family knows overcoming adversity is an easy but if you've got your family by your side, the times aren't so tough. Here's Across the Fence associate producer Keith Silva with our story. Lamphere Farm has overlooked Route 100 in Hyde Park since 1960. Known as a dairy of distinction, the Lamphere family has a new honor for their farm, the 2016 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. And they've got the t-shirts to prove it. Being the number one dairy farm in the state, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna buy the biggest Kirk prime and Katrina Lamphere took over ownership of this farm in 2007 from Kirk's parents, Russ and Judy. Kirk and Katrina's children, Chelsea, Carrie, Lucas, and Keith, grew up here. This is their home. Lamphere Farm is a business built on a legacy of hard work, financial responsibility, and family. When Kirk was 25 years old, he wanted to build a new barn. That's when he learned a valuable lesson from his dad, Russ, about farming and debt. He sent me to Yankee Farm Credit at 25 years old, and he says, go get the money now. Well, Yankee Farm Credit doesn't give that kind of money to a 25-year-old that doesn't have anything. And so I came home and he says, now we're gonna do it my way. And we built half of the barn and we milked in an old parlor. And then we built the other half of the barn. And in two years, we paid for that half of the barn. And he always stressed, you keep your debt low. You, you have to keep your debt low if you're gonna farm in Vermont. The Lampiers don't raise any calves, which makes them different from most dairy farms. Instead, they buy what are called replacements. Fully grown heifers expected to provide high quality milk. It's another lesson Kirk learned from his dad. Find out what you're good at and do that. It actually costs $2,000 to raise a heifer now. And we pick them and buy them for between $2,000 and $2,500. And so it, it is a big expense at the time, but it would be an expense even for the two years you're raising the animal. And it works for us. I guess that's the main reason it, it, it works for us. Every farm is different. Uh, you're not gonna find two farms or even five farms the same. But in the end, what we do, it has to be profitable so that we can keep going forward. Staying profitable is a challenge for Vermont dairy farmers in 2016. Following an all-time high in 2014, of $25 per 100 pounds of milk, or a little bit more than 11 gallons, the price paid to farmers has plummeted to $14. It's this kind of adversity that makes the Lampier's financial prudence pay off. When milk got it over $20, 100 weight, it was fun, it, it really was. When it went to $14, I put it as, this makes a real farmer. This, this, this is what, what will make or break you. And you do, you, when you come to the barn and it's $14, there's times that you say, why am I doing this? But then you remember the day that it was $20 and it will be again in some time. It's something to fight through because you know that on the other side of the fence, it can always, it's gonna get better. It's gonna get better. It always has. There's gonna be up down, there's gonna be down years, but if on the down years, if you save and, and get through, and then on the up years, you're gonna have better equipment, even though on the down years, your, your equipment's a little banged up because you can't buy anything. But when the up years are there, you're able to float across the water pretty easy. The volatile pricing of milk creates a crisis for dairy farmers every couple of years. Another crisis that perhaps looms even larger, farmers 
are getting older. In 2007, the USDA Census on Agriculture reported the average age of a farm owner was 58. That number has been steadily increasing since 1978. To encourage the next generation of farmers, the older generation needs to establish a farm transition plan. The land fears have already begun this process for the sake of their family and their business. When I was growing up, I just wanted to be a successful farm. Money wasn't such a big idea then, and it is now. We show the boys the milk checks, we show them the checkbook, and when they see that, and they see that a new John Deere tractor can be pulled into the yard and be able to write a check for it, or go pick 10 cows and write a check for it, the boys see all that, and they're like, wow, you know, this, this is successful. So by showing them that, and showing them that, you know, is that really telling us the truth on what, what's gonna happen here in five or 10 years? That way they see it and it gives them a little bit more pride in how it's done. I know I'm gonna own this farm at a young age. I know that, but I'm not afraid of it because I know dad will be there by my side if I need help. The Lampier's plan for the future of their farm business was a key factor in being selected as Dairy Farm of the Year. It's that next generation taking over that I think the judges really like to see uh, and, and that involvement so that when it came down to Tony Kitsos is a farm to management and, and educator and for UVM Extension. For a while, he oversees I mean, the Vermont farm. Dairy Farm of the Year program. If debt stays low, it's a lot easier to transfer and therefore what you see here now for a high quality operation will be able to be transferred without the new, next generation taking on huge amounts of debt that'll just saddle them and burden them and really inhibit their ability to get better. You've got to always be looking to the next generation when, when you're thinking about what it is that you're doing today. Kirk could always be thinking about, am I going to do something today that's going to hurt my son's abilities to take this farm over? Uh, he knows that they want a farm here going down the road, so he's really got to keep their interests in mind uh, with every decision that he makes. The Lampiers have seven employees to handle a herd of 500 cows and 1,000 acres of crops. Well, that'll be awesome. That'll the core great. four of the workforce are Kirk, Lucas, there's Keith, there's and Skylar Palea. He's been working for the Lampiers well, since he that. was 14. That's the only place I've ever worked. It's the only, I feel like it's mine. I've been here so long. Any day I'm here, I always feed the cows and I'm always in contact with our nutrition guy and keeping track of everything. We talk every morning about what, what's going to happen for the day. He's not my bi biological son, but he is my son. He really is. Oh, Skyler. He's 25, 200 pounds, and 6'5", but he acts like he's 15. Um, he's an older brother I've never had. He's known me since I was born, and he is my dad's second boss, so he does tell me what to do, even though he's a hired man, which sometimes is irritating, but at the same time, I'm like, he knows what has to be done, and I, I just have to listen to him because he's been here long, but it's, it's so easy being around everybody here because it, it's family. Unlike their brothers, the Lamphier sisters have chosen to pursue careers away from agriculture, Introduce but they're never far you. from the farm. Hey, I'm Chelsea. I'm Carrie. <laughs> Do you okay. want more than that? Carrie is enrolled in the Department of Nursing at UVM. Chelsea teaches music in Washington, D.C., and recently graduated from Ithaca. Even when she's away, Chelsea still helps out thanks to some modern technology. We have these cameras um, that are in different parts of the barn. So we have an app on my phone. I'm able to watch the live feed. And there have been a few times where a cow is in trouble or she's not calving correctly and I'm actually able to call and kind of partake in that way, which is really fun for me. Kirk and Katrina have worked the cost of their children's college tuition into the farm's expenses. So when they finish college, they can begin their careers debt-free. It's a gift that you don't take advantage of. It's something that you're really grateful for and you just, it's kind of like, wow, like, I don't know, it's just hard to describe. I put a cow on my graduation cap. All of my friends were like, what's the cow for? And I said, well, the cow's paid for school, so <laughs> thank you, Vermont. <laughs>
family is at the core of this farm and Katrina um, wouldn't have it any other way. Life. My mission was to be a mom. I wasn't a career-oriented person. I have a degree, I went to school, I've done it all. But my mission in my heart was to be a farm wife and a farm mom. We always want them to know where home is. That's the last thing I want to say to them, you know, when they are getting in their car, you know, always know where home is. Because we're not going anywhere. This isn't going anywhere. The four of them are my world, and I do everything because of them. That's great. So thinking outside of that is not part of my day. Keith's favorite days aren't his birthday or Christmas. It's the time he gets to work alongside his family. And lucky for him, there's a lot of work to do on a farm. We were chopping corn and I didn't even want a birthday party because I was in the tractor all day. My birthday present was out on the bunk. Christmas, I'm up here at three o'clock every morning. I love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. It's this kind of devotion to work and family that makes the Lamphiers stand out among their peers. I've been so competitive my entire life where I want to be number one and being the number one dairy farm for 2016 is like, the golden, the golden ticket. It, it's all about pride, I think. You know, it's not the only reason why we do it, but it's a, it's a, every bit of much a part of making a quality product is presenting a quality environment to produce that quality product. We always try to do the right thing, and you know, you you walk quietly. You, you just do. Pride, dedication and a love of family. That's the Lamphiers, the 2016 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. In Hyde Park, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Well, Tony Kitsos joins me now in the studio. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. What goes into choosing the Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year? So the, the committee that we pulled together is a committee of five farmers that are past recipients of the award. So again, each year, the, the recipient is truly judged by sort of a jury of their peers, if you will. Uh, those, those committee members tour the farms that are nominated. Um, this year we had four nominations that we chose to tour across the state. And uh, they look at things like milk quality, profitability, the type of farming that they do, and whether or not in general they're they're enjoying what they're doing, and can they be good ambassadors for the Vermont dairy industry? Of all the winners, is there one quality that they all sort of have in common? They also, the, the quality that I think they all have in common is I think the sense that they want to be here for the future and that they want to make sure that their farm transitions over from one generation to the next. And so um, the Lamphere success has a lot to do with keeping their debts low. Is that a pretty good business plan? That's a very good business plan for any business. Keep your debts low and you'll have plenty of money to operate when times are tough. And as the piece points out, this is a tough time right now. Milk prices are very low and if their debts are low and they're not having to make heavy loan payments, um, then they can operate and they can get through these tough times. Mm -hmm. Now I noticed in, in the pa package one of the kids said this plan works for us or the dad said this plan works for us and every farm is different so every farm has to figure out what's going to work best for them. That's correct Judy and, and if you don't figure out what works best for you and you try to do what the neighbors are doing you're not going to be successful and you're not going to truly enjoy what it is that you love about farming which is that family tradition and, and, and want to be able to sort of pass that on. And also to, you know, bringing the next generation up, showing them the good things as well as some of the tougher things, decisions that you have to make. That's right. There's nothing like the school of hard knocks to learn just what it is that you need to do um, going forward. Kirk learned that from his dad, Russ. Russ passed on some very valuable lessons to him. And Kirk uh, understood that and, and really knew that this is what it was that he needed to pass on to his boys if they really wanted to, to do that farm and uh, be successful at it. Well, it sounds like this farm's going to be around for a lot longer. They will be with the with the enthusiasm that the younger generation has to uh, to take over. Um, I, I just am going to look forward to working with them for the next 20 years. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.